Hello, I'm Ryan Jenkins, and in this video, we're going to explore six steps to create lasting organizational change. A big question every leader faces is how can I successfully innovate without alienating my current customers or employees? And it's not a problem to solve, more so it's a tension to manage. So I'd, I'd like you to follow these six steps to mitigate the risk of change and ensure innovations persist inside your organization because it's not a problem to solve we're always going to be uh, facing these challenges with innovating and how much and how little it's always going to be a tension that we've got to constantly manage so i want to uh, use an innovation example to tease out this six-step framework and the most important influential and game-changing innovation ever created this is the example i'm going to be using throughout our time together today uh, some people would say sanitation nope written language no Printing press, not even close. Electricity, it's gotta be electricity. That's the most game-changing innovation ever. No, it doesn't even hold a candle what I'm about to share with you. The greatest innovation that has ever been whipped up is of course, the Chick-fil-A milkshake. If you've ever had one of these things, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, but seriously, in 2006, Shane Todd, a Chick-fil-A franchise owner and operator in Athens, Georgia, created the highest rated product on Chick-fil-A's menu. The story behind this product is an innovation masterclass. And so here's how he did it. Step one, inspect intentions. Here's the story part of our, our story. For each one of these, I'm gonna give you the story, then I'm gonna give you the lesson, and then a question to ask um, as you approach this six step framework to innovation. So Todd's customers were always asking for milkshakes. Chick-fil-A only served ice dream, which is just an ice cream cone. And the opportunity to create a better experience for, for customers was available to, to Todd. So the lesson here is to inspect the intentions behind the intended innovation to ensure it's beneficial to the company and customer. In this case, it did um, fit the bill because Todd was creating um, something that his customers wanted. So the question you got to ask yourself in step one is, does the innovation stem from good intentions? And of course, the answer to this for Todd is yes. He was wanting to serve his customers. Step two is achieve alignment through values. Story that one of Chick-fil-A's values is customer first, where employees are encouraged to go the second mile. And Todd would be putting his customers first in this example. So this innovation that he was creating was aligned from a value perspective. So the lesson here is ensure alignment exists between the intended innovation and the company's values. And the question you got to ask is, does the innovation align with the organization's value or mission? So again, Todd can answer this question, yes. So because he could answer yes, he could move on now to step number two and a half, which is align, achieve alignment through the products and service lens. If Todd's innovation was pizza, it would not align with, his exist, with the existing menu items of Chick-fil-A. Milkshakes paired well with their existing products, making the innovation less risky. So the lesson here is ensure alignment exists between the intended innovation and existing products or services. So the question you gotta ask, does the innovation align with or enhance existing products or service? And obviously for Todd in this example, the, the answer was yes. Because again, it wasn't pizza. Pizza wouldn't have gone well with Chick-fil-A, but a milkshake does pair well with their existing products and services. So yes, he could move on now to step three. Collect some, con some consensus. The key word here is some. Todd gained support from the key, uh, just a few key Chick-fil-A leaders. Involve too many people and you run the risk of stalling the innovation. Involve none and run the risk of damaging the brand or limiting sustainability of the innovation. So the lesson here is to collect consensus discreetly and strategically. And the question you have to ask yourself is, does the innovation have consensus with one or two decision makers? And with Todd's, it was yes. And he wanted to involve just enough to where he could get buy-in, where he had some support, but again, not so many where the idea would be shut down or where the process would just get drawn out too long. So this is perhaps the most strategic and tricky step because you wanna collect some consensus, just not too much, not too little, very tricky. Step number four, start small. Todd started small by introducing the milkshake at his one restaurant and he bought the whipped cream and cherries on his own and began delivering the milkshakes to his customers. So the lesson here is starting small provides favorable anonymity, which mitigates risk and creates an environment for the innovation to fail forward. And the question you gotta ask is what small steps can be taken to test the innovation? 
Step number five, verify viability. Service time was important for, to Chick-fil-A, senior management, of course, if you're in the quick service business, service time matters. Todd ensured he could make one milkshake in less time it took to prepare two Diet Cokes. That was the very specific benchmark they were going for. And then they also surveyed customers after they started delivering the, the milkshakes to verify viability. So the lesson here is identify clear and measurable success indicators. And the question you've got to ask is how will the innovation prove successful? That brings us to our sixth and final step, which is to scale strategically. Milkshakes were rolled out in 26 restaurants in, in, in uh, North Carolina. So they were successful at Todd's restaurant and they rolled them out to 26 restaurants in North Carolina. They conducted a year long evaluation and they did a nationwide rollout and then it became the highest rated product on the menu in just two years. So the lesson here is take calculated and progressive steps to scale the innovation. And the question you gotta ask yourself is how will the innovation be successfully scaled? So here is a recap, the six steps to create lasting change. Feel free to screenshot this and these are all of the steps and the questions that we went through. I hope it's really valuable to you. Of course, this is a very um, simple uh, example of a milkshake, but I think that's the beauty of it, right? Is this is simple, but it's not always easy. And so hopefully this is give you a good framework to create that lasting change and to improve your industry, your organization, or perhaps even your team. Thank you for your time. If you'd like more information about um, the, the services I extend at live events or virtual trainings, whatever, uh, simply email me at ryan at ryan at day, ryan com. And if you want information about information like this packaged in a digital course format, simply visit syncLX.com to learn more. I hope that was helpful. Have a great day.